Will a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour battery run a standard countertop microwave like this one here? That's what I wanna find out today. Not only do I wanna find out will it work, but I wanna know also if it does, how well it will work. This is a scenario that we have not only in our RV, but in power outages and so forth at our house. And then here in our tiny home, which is where I'm at today, this is your standard 1000 watt newer microwave. I consider this just a regular old countertop microwave. And I'm gonna run this on an inverter, which I have right up here. I've got a battery monitor connected to it. So when we hook it up to the battery, we'll know everything that's going on. This here is a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour battery that was sent to me by Greener Power. So I could use it in a video like this. I have done multiple capacity tests on this and the battery has checked out really well. So I definitely think this battery is gonna be great for this test. I love the little mini size that these are now coming in. So they're really easy to carry around. And it's been, like I said, so far a great battery. We've had this microwave in our tiny home for about a year now, and it's been a great microwave and done everything we wanted it to do. And the inverter, have used it many times before, never let me down, been a good inverter. So I think this test is gonna have everything it needs to get a good real world test of a 1000 watt microwave. So let's get to it. All right, to get this test started, what I've done is hooked up the 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter to this 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. I've got excessive lead wires to keep the voltage difference between the inverter and the battery as minimal as possible. And I've got this battery monitor in between using this shunt right here on the negative side. So it is tracking all the power that's coming off the battery. Now this is showing what's coming out of the battery, not what is coming out of the inverter. There is overhead on an inverter. This one has been pretty good. We'll see the overhead in just a minute when I turn it on, but there is some overhead with any converting of electrical power like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the inverter on. As you can see, the microwave turned on also because I already have it plugged in over here. And we're looking at about five watts. Now that's pretty normal. This microwave must not pull very much at all when it's on but idle. So what we're gonna be watching today is when I kick on this microwave, again, it's a 1000 watt microwave, but we're gonna see how much power it actually uses when it's running. So microwaves are gonna use a more consistent power because they're constantly trying to heat up whatever's in there on like a refrigerator or freezer, which is just trying to keep something cold and the insulation can kind of keep it cold for a while. This is actually trying to heat something up. So we are probably gonna see a lot more consistent power usage, but again, in real world versus just specs, there's usually a pretty big difference and that's what I wanna find out. So to get it started, I'm just gonna throw on a 30 second microwave runtime, which is basically full power for 30 seconds. That's crazy. 1.73 kilowatts. That's a lot of power for a 1000 watt microwave. I was not expecting that at all. Okay, so what we just saw definitely threw me off a little bit. I really was not expecting that. I didn't really dig into the specs on this microwave other than the fact that it says it's a 1000 watt microwave. But as we saw here, when this microwave kicks on, it's using almost 2000 watts of power. That's a little bit crazy to me. I did not expect it because this is a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. So that means with this running, it's outpowering not only the inverter, but the battery specs too. Now the crazy thing here is that the battery did it with no problem. It was actually pulling more power than this battery is supposed to be able to put out the battery was still handling it. So again, like I said, I've done capacity tests on this battery and the battery has done awesome. So it's probably just specced out well and it can give us that extra boost. The inverter, crazy enough, was also putting out more than it's spec to do. Now it was chirping and that's just to let you know that it is above its specs. So I would expect it to be giving us a warning, but it let that thing run 30 seconds at well beyond its capacity and still did it. So now that I'm prepared for that, let's try this one more time and really examine this monitor. So again, I'm just gonna give it 30 seconds by hitting start. One point seven. Yeah, 1.69, 1.7. That is 1,700 watts 
about that it's pulling. So again, it's over this, 140 amps, well beyond what that spec that to do. They're both doing it just fine. The voltage is even staying pretty high. What it really looks like is, is if you want to run a microwave with a very safe, consistent power load, this isn't just a thousand watts and I thought I had 500 extra watts. This thing's pulling 1700 watts. I'm actually going over the inverter. I wouldn't want to run this microwave on anything really less than a 2500 watt pure sine wave inverter. That's just me. So this did answer my question. A thousand watt microwave is pulling 1700 watts of power. So although a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour battery like this one can handle it probably for shorter bursts of time, it's really not the right setup for a microwave. This again is a smaller microwave. Yes, you can get even tinier microwaves than this, but about a thousand watts is, is a small, normal countertop microwave. So the key here on the microwaves is, is to know the true power that they're going to use versus just what they're rated at cooking power. Apparently there is a lot of overhead on a microwave. So I do want to add this in. I did not look at these specs before I did this test. It says 120 volts input 1600 watts output a thousand. If this thing's running at 1700 watts, but it's only using a thousand watts to warm up my food, then it's wasting somewhere in the system 700 watts of power. So that's pretty inefficient to warm up your food in my opinion. There's one more thing I wanna look at, and that is gonna be what's coming out of the inverter. To do that, I've gotta push the battery back so we can see the screen on the inverter. All right, so what I've done here is I've moved the battery back, the inverter back, so we can see not only the power coming out of the battery, but what is coming out of the inverter. So. The inverter is saying it's getting 13.1 volts. The battery from the monitor is saying it has 13.2 volts. So there's a 0.1 volt-ish loss coming from the battery to the inverter. Very common. Even with these really heavy gauge wires, there's always gonna be a little bit of loss. We're at 112 volts, so that's fine. As long as this inverter can get enough power in to maintain 110 or higher, then it's usually pretty good. But this is gonna show us how many amps is coming out of this inverter to power this so we can get a good idea of how many watts it's using. So here we go one more time. I'm gonna add 30 seconds to the clock and we're gonna see what it's gonna do. All right, there it goes. 1.65, 12.8 amps at 112 volts. It is able to maintain the voltage. It's having no problem powering the microwave. It's definitely showing a big difference on voltage. That's why it's chirping and because it's going over the normal power. But yeah, I mean, it's really using that much power. I'm not an expert on microwaves, but I was assuming a thousand watts of power was gonna be, yes, it's cooking power, but I didn't think there was gonna be that much overhead. I thought maybe a thousand watt microwave might be, I don't know, 1100. I didn't know there was that much overhead on a microwave. So this test for me was awesome. It gives me a great understanding of how much extra power I'm gonna to need to run a microwave. Like I said, it's a great microwave, great inverter, great battery. I mean, the whole setup here is all good items that I would buy again if I needed them. So I have no complaints about any of the components. I just didn't know they used that much power. So anyways, I hope this information was helpful. I appreciate y'all checking out the video. Thank you very much for watching. Y'all take care.